promoting yoga for many years and providing free yoga classes to the community members for the better physical and mental health. Today, our dedicated yoga teacher, Mr. Deepak Gupta and his team will be guiding you through the yoga program today and I hope all of you enjoy and benefit from that. Before I invite our chief guest for the event, a couple of housekeeping rules. Toilets are on the right hand side of the foyer. If you go outside, it's on the right hand side. Please keep your mobile phones in silent mode throughout the event, please. Also, in case of any emergency, please go towards the field on the outside and gather there. Now, I would like to invite our Chief Guest, Honorable Consul General of India, Ms. Dantu Charanga Sizi, to address the crowd and give us a brief about the International Yoga Day. Thank you. Madam Charanga Sizi. Good morning, Namaskar. Thank you, Kapoori. I acknowledge the traditional owners of the land where we gather today and pay respects to elders past, present, and emerging. Thank you, Supriya Ji, for inviting me today to join the Ishwa celebration of the sixth International Day of Yoga. During the most unprecedented and challenging times of novel coronavirus COVID 19, Ishwa had been forthcoming in supporting the community and in particular the students and other stranded Indian nationals, as did other organizations, in rising to the occasion and giving out with both hands and heart. The selflessness with which all of you have served the community together is extremely commendable. It is such a wonderful uh, sense of uh, feeling and the satisfaction to see that the International Day of Yoga is being celebrated across Western Australia all through June. This would not have been possible without the contribution of the community. I would surely like to mention the efforts by Ishwa and particularly of uh, Mr. Deepak Gupta in keeping the community engaged with the practice of yoga in these difficult times, whether it is by Zoom or Facebook. 
which I myself participated in many of them and benefited extremely. The awareness and popularity of yoga has been only growing more and more with every passing year since 2015. In this challenging period, yoga offered tre tremendous opportunity to know our immunity system better and refining or rather tuning it further to meet the emotional challenges all of us faced at one stage or the other. Yoga has the potential to cater to mental, physical and psychological upliftment. As said by the famous yoga practitioner, Mr. B.K.S. Iyengar, change is not something that we should fear, rather it is something that we should welcome for without change, nothing in this world would grow or blossom, and no one in this world would ever move forward to become the person they are meant to be. Just look at it, he has said in a time when everything was okay, and we are learning it during this uh, pandemic time, that how true are these words that he had spoken ages back. In his message on the 6th International Day of Yoga, Prime Minister Mr. Narendra Modi said, and I quote, in the post-COVID era, the focus on preventive health care will get stronger and that is why I am confident that yoga will become even more popular. The regular practice of yoga gives emotional strength and empathy. We begin to understand that others would be going through the same struggle as us. So we become a soldier to support for someone in need. Enjoy yoga and have a wonderful weekend. Hope to see all of you tomorrow at Government House, which will be the last leg of our celebration of the 6th International Day of Yoga. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you, Madam. Uh, now I would like to request ISWA President, Mr. Shukriya Kaur. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I'm Supriya, President of Indian Society of Western Australia. I'll begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet today. And I would like to pay respect to their elders, past, present, and emerging. I'd like to thank you all for making your, your valuable time this morning to be here and celebrate this very uh, important occasion, International Yoga Day celebration by ISWA. Madam, uh, I would like to thank Madam Consul General of India in Perth, Dantu Chadan Dasi ji, for being here as well as our chief guest. Thanks, man. thanks Madam. Um, and the, as Madam narrated, the importance of this day, the importance of the celebration worldwide, which we all understand, and particularly in Western Australia, within our periphery, um, yoga has obviously taken a very prominent role um, over the past years, and particularly in the last two to three months when Time has been challenging, as you all know, in the COVID time, you have all been locked down at home. There has been mental distress, there's been job loss, there's been physical problems, uh, disease, many things. And the yoga has always been a, a way, to, way to sort of recover, reconcile, uh, stay well, physically, mentally, spiritually. I'm very glad that uh, Iswa and particularly Deepak Ji has been relentlessly doing yoga uh, as a teacher and online through Zoom, through Zoom and Facebook uh, and other means over the past weeks during this challenging time, which I hope um, has been helpful uh, for many of you who couldn't, um, um, obviously we couldn't come together physically because of the COVID restrictions. Even before COVID as well, for the past years, Deepak Ji has been running uh, uh, yoga here uh, on behalf of Iswa uh, every Saturday. I think I see a lot of faces here. I know that you guys are like a regular students of, of Deepak Ji that you attend here every Saturday. So this has been going on for quite some time. And um, we just thought that, you know, the, the International Yoga Day celebration being, being around uh, today is a fantastic opportunity. This is actually our, our regular class as well, Saturday morning. Uh, but we thought this is a fantastic opportunity to uh, to do that celebration here in particular. And we, having Madam Consul General here obviously graces the occasion much more. Um, uh, we, we all understand, you know, this is, comes from India. Everybody appreciates it. Yoga is taking bigger and bigger shape. And having Madam presence here obviously makes this occasion much more important for all of us. I would also like to announce that today, 
So as you know, uh, Iswa has been streaming yoga that Deepak has been doing through Facebook uh, uh, for the last several weeks. We are also launching our YouTube channel today, uh, particularly dedicated to yoga. Um, if you wonder why YouTube, um, YouTube is, is, is a proper channel where you, know, you can browse through all the fantastic yoga recordings by Deepak ji uh, in the past and, and going forward as well. You can see all the, uh, the yoga sessions recorded by Yuswa will be there. So you can pretty much browse through it. Um, you can practice yoga. Uh, you can download. You can keep it for your record. And you can practice with Deepak ji if you cannot make it even after COVID, right? Um, yoga will be held here um, uh, physically. I think we'll start that very soon, depending on the availability of this venue. But then there will be many more. Like this venue can accommodate only 100 people. But I'm pretty sure but when Deepak ji actually goes live, I have seen that there are at least a few thousands that, that, that watch that. I think the last one was probably 25,000 people that viewed Deepak ji's yoga through Iswa's Facebook channel. So that kind of inspired us that, you know, um, so Facebook is good um, and it's be, uh, we are live as, as we speak right now. Uh, but it becomes a bit difficult to, you know, browse through and find out what happened when and then again look at the older uh, the older um, seasons if you like. Um, and hence the YouTube channel. So we are right now as we speak, we are live in YouTube as well as on the Facebook channel uh, of, of Iswa. And we would like to continue that. We hope this is our humble effort to take yoga to the broader audience. We cannot accommodate everyone wherever we do it, but we hope that this will at least give the opportunity to the broader and wider audience of the wider Western Australian community to be with us, practice yoga, stay healthy physically, mentally and spiritually. With that, I will uh, uh, finish my talk and let's enjoy yoga. Thank you Deepak Ji and uh, all the teachers today here for your time and let's have a beautiful morning. Thank you. Thank you, Supriya. Now I would like to invite Deepak Gupta ji. Good morning all, everyone. Suprabha. How are you going? Everyone good? Happy? Yep. Good. So before I begin, I would like to acknowledge the traditional owner of this land on which we stand and I pay my respect to their elders past, present and emerging. Ladies and gentlemen, on all yogis, it's a pleasure to see you all here. And can I say start by, we all love yoga. Good? We all love Thank yoga. You. So commonly known as Yoga Day, 21st June, which we celebrate every year. It started in 2015 by the great and genuine effort made by Indian Prime Minister Mr. Rain Modi. And he said in the United Nations that yoga is an inevitable gift of our ancient tradition. And this gift that India has given to the world to spread the peace and harmony within us, among us and around us. The word yoga derives from Sanskrit word like yuj, that means unite or union, which symbolizes the body and consciousness together. Yoga is a complete science and has many scientific evidences in the transformation of human life and embodies unity of mind and body, thoughts and actions, restraints and fulfillment. On the holistic approach, it is achieved to well-being, happiness, through the asanas, breathing techniques, meditation, pranayama, and with a proper diet. In the recent time, given the increase in depression and anxiety among the people in the era of COVID-19, the message of yoga is promoting physical and mental health and well-being of humanity have never been so more relevant. Through yoga, human beings are wired to engage, be generous, and being generous is very good for your health. And when you give, you increase your self-esteem, self-worth, and it also boosts your immune system. Now around 2 million people in Australia do the regular practice of yoga, which has doubled in the last 10 years. Today is about spreading the message of yoga. We hope that you all get motivated to continue the practice of yoga to lead a healthy, 
happy, peaceful and contented life. Also, please help those who we need, be generous and do our bit to serve the community for their wellness and happiness. We encourage and motivate you all. Look after yourself, stay in touch with your friends, family, have fun, laugh, spend time with nature and mindfully be of others. So, thanks very much. Hope you enjoyed today. And I would like to invite Padmini Ji for one mantra chanting to start our yoga session. Thank you. Namaskar. Uh, we are most of us are familiar with the Gayatri Mantra. And I would urge anyone who knows it to join me in chanting this month. And we'll end with three Shantis. The gist of the mantra is, it is a universal prayer that guides our intellect and inspires us to walk on a righteous path. It encourages purity of thoughts, words and deeds. Om Bhur Bhuvaswaha Tat Savitur Varenyam Bhargo Devasya Dhimai Dhiyo Yona Prachodaya Om Shanti 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 Sorry Vinda, I'm so sorry. Vinda will guide us through today's session. everyone. Lovely to see all your smiling faces and happy to be back here with Iswa going through the yoga practice. So my name is Brinda and I have the honor this morning to take you through your practice. The sequence will be about 45 minutes and I ask that you all take care of yourself through this practice. Uh, you know your body better than anybody else so don't push too hard. Bring it always back to your breath and your movement and sometimes you might need to just sit down and take rest, that's okay. Um, pace yourself. So be mindful of your movement, your breath and rest at any time. So I'd like to invite onto stage our volunteers who are going to uh, um, demonstrate for us. So we'll start first of all with uh, Deepak. You all know him very well. Todd, who does the classes on Tuesday evening. We have Param, who's going to do the uh, demonstration down on the, on the front of the um, hall. And Kiel, Zeal, sorry, who's going to be up on stage with us. Those on stage here are going to mirror image you. So please follow my instructions, because I will give you the left and the right. And they will just mirror image so that we're all going in the same direction. So beginning with a warm up, please, everybody standing at the front of your mat. Feet are hip distance apart. Shoulders are relaxed and engage gently through your core muscle. That's your stomach muscles. So drop your chin now. We're going to begin by doing some head rotations. So we're going to stop, start by just dropping the chin down to the chest and start the rotations clockwise to the count of six. As you take the ear to the sh shoulder, all the way to the back and to the front. By the count of three, your head it should be at the back. Four, five to the shoulder, six back to the chin. When you come back to center, let's go the other way. Anti-clockwise. Continue to breathe in and out of your nose. And finally, chin to chest, back to neutral. Bring your head back up. So we'll do some shoulder rotations now, warming up through the shoulders. So as you inhale, I want you to shrug your shoulders up towards your ears. Take the shoulder back. Shoulder blades squeeze together, exhale, and back down. 
Let's do it again. Inhale. Squeeze the shoulder blades back down. One last time. Breathe in. Breathe out. Back to neutral. Let's go the opposite way. The shoulders come up, forwards and back. Go up, inhale, exhale as you come forwards. One last time, inhale. Round the shoulders as you come forward and exhale. Excellent. So now let's do some rotation through your hips, warming up through the hips. So feet are hip distance apart, hands on your hips. And we're going to rotate from the hips, keeping the upper body nice and straight. And I want you to go clockwise to begin with, from the hips. So in your own time, rotate clockwise. Take the hips to the back, all the way to the front. Find the nice loosening up through the hips. And then back to center. Let's go the other side. Anti-clockwise. Rotate. Breathe. Focus. Always coming back to the breath whenever you feel a little bit lost or you feel that you need to focus. Back to center. And stillness. Now just bring the feet together. Bend at the knees. And place your hands on your knees, ready for some knee rotations, warming up through the synovial fluid of your knees. Anti-clockwise, or clockwise first. Rotate. Gently. Slowly, warming up. It's a cold morning. We all feel it's a little chilly. Continue anti-clockwise now. Take it to the other way. That's it. Wonderful. And then come to stillness and standing at the front of your mat. We usually do a little bit more of a warm up on a cold day like this, but we're just going to move straight forward into our standing postures. But I, I guarantee you, you will get warm, so don't worry. So we start off Tadasana, mountain posture or palm tree posture. Standing at the front of your mat. Feet together, big toes touching, small gap between your heels. Arms down by your side, maybe the palms facing forward, welcoming the energy into the room and into yourself. Close down your eyes if you wish, to bring more focus onto your breath. Maybe take the gaze inward. Breathe in and out. So pushing down through the feet, through the four corners of your feet, as you elongate through your spine, be the tallest person in the room. Engaging the muscles of your legs, squeezing the legs tight as you engage the core, your Uddiyana Bandha, those stomach muscles to protect your lower back. Let the shoulders relax and at the same time find length through your spine and through the sides of your neck. Imagine you have a piece of string drawn from the crown of your head, taking you all the way up, making you the tallest person in the room. These are basic guidelines, Tadasana basic guidelines that should really be maintained throughout all postures in yoga. Let's start first posture, open up your eyes. So we're going to do Ardha, Kati Chakrasana, also known as standing half moon or lateral arc posture. Breathe in as you take your arms overhead and interlace your fingers. Release the index fingers, taking what we call a pistol grip. Are your biceps by your ears? If not, don't worry, but let the shoulders relax. Don't shrug the shoulders up towards your ears. As you exhale now, Pushing the feet into the floor, straighten up through your upper body, looking forward. On your next inhale, take the arms to the right as you push your hips to the left. Create the arc, the half moon posture. 
Continue to breathe as you look forward, engaging those muscles of the leg. As you inhale, can you push the arms over a little bit further to the side of the room as you push your hips to the opposite side. One last inhale. Stay for the exhale. On the inhale, back to center. And let's take it to the other side. Breathe in, reach tall and take it to the left. Beautiful. Try not to bring the upper body forward. If you are bending forward, maybe don't go so deep. Legs are nice and straight. Core is engaged. The glutes are tight. Fingers pointing. One more inhale. Through the nose, exhale through the nose. Inhale, back to center. Well done. Arms down. Keep them where they are, or if they're down, back up again, please. Next posture. The shoulders may feel a little sore because your arms are up. Just give them a little shrug. Just let it ease, the muscles ease. And then arms back up into the same pistol grip for Ardha Chakrasana, also known as half wheel or back bend. So engage now through the core, your Uddiyana Bandha. Engage through the legs, push your feet down. Drop the head back, take the eye gaze up to the ceiling. And start to push the hips forward as you draw the hands to the back of the room, creating a little back bend. Now this, again, should not cause any pinching in the lower back. You should find you opening up through the chest, through your collarbones, and you're creating strength through the legs, but you're still back bending to the back. Keep breathing as much as you can. Inhale. Stay for the exhale. And on the inhale, return back to center. Arms down by your side. Well done. Are we warming up, everybody? Feeling a bit uh, like we can do a, a few more harder postures? Good. We're going to start now with Virabhadrasana 1, also known as warrior posture. So I want to see some nice Iswa warriors here today. Uh, let's begin standing again in front of the mat, Tadasana. Breathe in, take the arms overhead, shoulder distance. As you exhale, take a big step with the right foot to the back of the mat. Back foot is placed at 45 degrees, front foot still facing forward. Hips are facing forward. Bend through the front knee firmly. Place the four corners of the front foot into the mat, pushing hard. Push the outer edge of your left foot into the mat, the knife edge of your foot into the back of the mat. Creating a firm base, bending through that front knee without overshooting the toes. Inhale. Maybe take the gaze up to your hands, to the ceiling, or to the front of the room. Feel that stretching from your fingertips, to your shoulders, to your hips, as the legs are strong, creating that strong base for your Virabhadrasana. Hips are still facing the front of the room. If you need a slightly wider stance, you can shuffle the front foot out to the side of the mat, because this is a very tight, closed hip posture, you may feel it uncomfortable. Take a deep inhale. Stay for the exhale. And we will open up now to Virabhadrasana 2. I want you all to open up your arms and take your gaze now and your hips facing the oval. Vira 2. Fingertips pointing to the front and the back of the room, engaging the arms so the arms are not floppy. Find strength through the arms so that the, the legs don't feel so sore. The shoulders should be relaxed. The shoulder blades should be melting down towards your hips. So no shrugging shoulders up to your ears. If there's any pinching sensation, just Take a little bend through the elbows if you require. Good. 
Breathe in and out. Now, we're now moving on to Trikonasana, a triangle pose. Straighten the front leg, your left leg. Left toes are still facing to the front of the mat. As we breathe in, extend the left hand forward towards me as you reach and tilt the upper body, taking the right hand up towards the ceiling. Front leg is straight. Placing the hand of the, on the ankle, the shin, the floor, wherever it feels comfortable for you. Right fingertips reach for the ceiling as the left fingertips reach down. Find that stretch from fingertip to fingertip. Open the chest. Take your eye gaze to the right hand if you wish. Are you still pushing those feet into the mat, engaging the thigh muscles? Are you still breathing normally through the nose? If, may, if not, maybe you've gone a little bit too deep and you may wish to come out a little. So, breathe one more time. In. As you exhale, stay. Next inhale, come back to center. Arms down by your side. Bring the back foot forward to the front of the mat. Facing forward. Excellent. Let's do the other side. So starting with Virabhadrasana 1. Standing Tadasana. Front of the mat, feet hip distance. Breathe in. Take arms overhead, shoulder distance apart. Keep the shoulders relaxed. As you exhale, take a wide step now with the left foot to the back of the mat. And place the back foot 45 degrees. Hips are still facing to the front of the room now. This is Veera Badrasana 1. So hips coming to the front of the room. A closed hip posture. We are creating strength through the shoulders, creating strength through the legs. Bend through the front knee, firmly planting the four corners of that front knee into the mat. So push through that front foot, don't take too much pressure through that front knee. Firmly push the outer edge of the right foot into the mat, the knife edge of your right foot, to give you that strong base for your Virabhadrasana 1. Hips face in front of the room, continue to breathe, take your eye gaze maybe up to the ceiling or to the front of the room, whatever feels more comfortable in your neck. One more breath in here. Breathe in. Reach tall. As you exhale, open up into Vira Padrasana 2, facing the inside of the room, towards the back. Hands come out. Palms facing down. And the front knee is still bent. Take your drushti, your eye gaze of the front hand, the middle finger of your front hand. Yeah. Gaze, your focus, your breath, looking out over your front hand. Still maintain a deep bend in that front knee without overshooting the toes. If you are, maybe you need to take a slightly wider step. Engage the muscles of the arms. Don't let them be floppy. Check in on your breath. Don't hold the breath. Moving now to Trikonasana. Straighten the front knee. So the right toes are still facing the front. Breathe in now and extend the right hand forward as you can reach and then tip the upper body to bring the left fingertips to touch the floor, ankle or shin. Take your eye gaze up to the left hand if you wish. Are you still pushing? Just go to the depth that feels comfortable for you. Engage the muscles of the core. Reach the arms in opposite directions. Find a big, big wingspan. Breathing normally through the nose, in and out through the nose. Find the depth that will allow you to hold this posture for one more inhale. Exhale. Inhale, bring the body back up to neutral. Take a breath. Bring the left foot forward to meet the right at the front of the mat, arms down by your side, and just close down your eyes, standing here in Tadasana. And take some deep breaths, feeling the energy through your body, feeling the life force in your body, the 
prana, the chi, flowing as it should do. Maybe your heart is, can't beat is a little faster. <coughs> Moving now on to Surya Namaskar, which will certainly get you nice and warmed up. <coughs> Standing at the front of the mat, open up your eyes. Tadasana, front of the mat, feet together this time. Bring your hands together in Namaste at the heart center. Breathing in, take your arms overhead. Hands stay up, maybe a little back bend. Exhale, forward fold, Uttanasana. Placing both hands on the floor, bending the knees as much as you need to. Because this posture, this requires you to have both hands on the floor. So bend the knees as much as you need to. Step the right foot back, then the left, and hold plank position, or go down to your knees, whatever suits you. Eye gaze to the mat if you are in plank. Hold for an inhale and an exhale. Then we drop both knees to the mat, followed by your chest, your chin. Elbows tucked in nicely close to the side. As you look forward, breathe in, slide forward into Cobra Bhujangasana. Breathe in, coming away from the floor. As we breathe out, we take the hips up high, tuck your toes, downward facing dog. Right leg back to the front of the mat, into a deep lunge. Left leg follows, and then inhale slowly, unravel the spine, the spine one vertebra at a time slowly into a back bend, and on an exhale, hands back to heart center. Namaste position. Once more to the other side, breathe in as you take your arms overhead to meet. Little back bend if need be. Exhale, fold forward, Uttanasana. Place both hands, hands on the floor, bending the knees as much as you need to. Step the left foot back this time, followed by the right. Bring yourself into plank position. Hips are down low, so a nice straight line from the crown of your head to your shoulders to your hips. If not, just drop the knees. Take a breath in and out through plank, and then drop the knees. The chin, the chest, coming down, slowly rising up, elbows tucked in, push forward to Bhujangasana, Cobra posture. The inhale. As you exhale, take the hips up high, folding into downward facing dog, pressing the palms into the floor. Left leg back, followed by the right, to the front of the mat. Coming up slowly, unravel the spine, coming all the way up, back bend, and hands to heart center, exhale, back to Namaste. Let's go one more time, one more round, left and right. Are we all up for that? Yeah, yeah excellent. And um, it's not an examination, okay, so you can smile. <laughs> I'm not going to mark you out of 10, so please, enjoy. Standing to Dasana, front of the mat, feet together. Bring your hands together, Namaste at heart center. Breathe in. Take your arms overhead, hands to meet, maybe a small back bend. Exhale, folding forward. Both hands on the floor, bend the knees. Step the right foot back, followed by the left, into plank position. All the knees come to the floor. Hold for an inhale and exhale. Coming down slowly, Bhujangasana. Breathing in as you bring your head forward. Breathing out as you take your hips up high into downward facing dog. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Then bring the right foot forward, deep lunge, followed by the left. And inhale slowly to stand. Unravel the spine, back bend, exhale, hands to heart center. Wonderful. Left leg, only have one more side to go. Breathe in, take arms overhead. Back bend, exhale, release to the floor. Nice deep bend in the knees. As we inhale, take the right leg, left leg back, then the right. 
plank position, hold. Tuck the elbows close to the body, bring the knees, the chest, the chin down, and slide forward, Bhujangasana, cobra posture. Inhale as we come up into our cobra. Exhale as we take the hips up high, downward facing dog. Bring the left leg back, followed by the right. And inhale slowly now, take care of your spine. As BKS Iyengar said, the spine is the source of all energy. Look after your back. Arms overhead, exhale, hands back to heart center. So from here we're going to transition from standing to seating, but we're going to do that through our chair posture, our favorite posture, Ukkatasana. So please raise both hands parallel in front of you, palms facing the mat. Take a little bend in the knees, and you can do this with feet apart or feet together, your choice. And bend to your depth where you can hold comfortably for three breaths, inhale and exhale. If it's too much, just come up a little bit more, looking forward if you can. Press your fingertips towards me. Use the arm muscles, engage the arm muscles, but at the same time let the shoulders relax. Now, so we're going to come down slowly to the count of 10, but if you wish, you can come straight down to the mat to the seated position, using your arms to give you balance as you come to a seat. So 10, 9, that's it, keep smiling, 8, 7, Six, five, four. Should we hold it there for a minute? No. No? Okay, come on down. Three, two, one, on the floor. Ah, that's it. Yes, relax, relax. Sitting postures. But don't worry, we still have a few more to go. You're not finished yet. So, starting in the drasana, please. So, kneeling. So coming up onto your knees and then bring your hips back down to your heels. Sitting down on your heels if this is comfortable for you or maybe you can do Padmasana if that's more comfortable, whatever. But this is just uh, the diamond posture. Feet are flat if you're sitting in Madrasana. Close down your eyes. Hands are on your lap. Shoulders are relaxed. Take a deep breath in through the nose. Exhale. Twice more. Inhale. Exhale. Last time. Inhale. Exhale. I should have said at the start as well, as we inhale, the belly relaxes. As we exhale, the belly button draws back towards the spine. So starting first sitting posture, Sasangasana or rabbit posture. Start by placing your hands behind you on your hips, the thumbs are facing out. And then slowly slide your hands down towards your heels and grab hold of your heels, your thumbs are still facing outside. So this thumbs outside means that your shoulders are opening and you're broadening through your collarbones. So Sasangasana is a deep compression posture and you'll find your internal organs feel a little uncomfortable, so don't go as deep. Just take it to where you feel you can today. First of all, let's begin with a big breath in through the nose and take a gaze up to the ceiling. Open up through the collarbones. Now as you exhale, round the spine. So bring the chin to the chest first. Round, so the shoulders come forward. Chin to chest and start to bring the upper body down so the forehead or the crown of the head touches the front of the mat. Slowly. Deep compression of internal organs here. Massaging through your internal organs. You should still be able to breathe in this posture. Holding the heels nice and tight. So that length, that tightness you have from your shoulders to your heels through the arms is what helps you to round the spine a little bit more. Continue to breathe. Now slowly, as slowly as we went in, I want you to come out. Continue to hold the hips, coming up slowly, slowly, chin to chest, and the last thing to come forward is your chin. Beautiful. Sasangasana. 
moving now onto the Padakanasana or round angle posture. So slowly, just drop the hips to one side and come with your feet forward, feet facing me. And then bend at the knees, bring the knees up to your chest, bring the soles of the feet together and let the knees drop out. Hold on to the feet with your hands, either at the shins or the, the feet or the ankles, wherever is comfortable for you, and just start to flap your knees up and down, up and down like a butterfly. Just create some movement, up and down, up and down. Back is nice and straight. Still looking to the front of the room, continuing to breathe, and then come to stillness. Bada Konasana, bound angle. So knees are as close to your groin as you wish. You should feel a nice stretch through the inside of your legs, maybe through your hips, and the back is nice and straight. So inhale and exhale. And we're going to move now onto Paschimottanasana. So bring both legs out in front of you, straight, straighten your legs. Flex your feet. Feet are together. Legs are together. Squeeze the muscles of the thighs together. Elongate through the spine, nice and tall. Bring the arms up overhead as you breathe in. And as you breathe out, fold forward over your legs. Touching your toes, your ankles, your shins, your knees, wherever you can. Maybe even bending through the knees. So this again is a rounding posture. So we're looking for compression again through the internal organs. We've done enough stretching of the hamstrings. We're rounding the spine. So bring the chin to your chest and continue to breathe. Can you hold it for one more breath? Inhale. Reach a little further forward as you exhale. And slowly letting go Unravel your spine, come back up to seated position. And then slowly lie down, take your hands to the side and lie down completely on the mat. Back down, legs down, arms by the side. So we now prepare for wind removing posture, Kavanamakasana. Bend the right knee and draw it up to your chest. Interlock your fingers, place it just below your kneecap. On an inhale, I want you to flex, keep that other foot flex, the straight leg, and flex it towards me. On an exhale, draw the right knee in closer to the right shoulder. Maybe you need to bring the knee out first a little bit and then back into the shoulder to avoid the rib cage. So with every inhale, you push the left leg forward, engaging the muscles nice and firmly. With every exhale, you draw the knee in closer to the shoulder, the right knee. Massaging through your ascending colon. One more breath. Breathe in. Pull a little harder. Exhale. Return to neutral, both legs down. Let's go the other side. Bend in your left knee up to your chest. Maybe go out of the ribcage a little bit before you draw it down to the left shoulder. So as we inhale, kick the right foot towards me. Exhale, draw the left knee in closer to the left shoulder. Engaging the muscles now of that right leg. So you might even feel your kneecap lift a little bit off the floor. Massaging now through the descending column. One more breath. Breathe in. Breathe out. Release the left leg to the floor. Arms down by your side. And finally, we will bring both knees up to our chest to give ourselves a big hug. Wrap your arms around the shins just below your kneecaps. Maybe you can Grab a hold of opposite elbows or just the hands, whatever is comfortable for you. Again, feeling the full compression through the colon area. Keep breathing. 
Maybe take your gaze down towards your knees, chin to chest. So we have a nice straight spine. The spine is pushing down into the mat. You're looking good. One more breath here. Inhale. Exhale. Return to neutral, bringing both legs back down. And relax, arms down by your side. So while we're on our backs, we'll prepare for Setu Bandhasana or bridge posture. So bending the knees once more, soles of the feet are flat on the mat, bringing the heels as close to your buttocks as you can. You should maybe be able to even just slightly touch the, the backs of your heels with your hands. So once you've got that posture, placing the arms down by your side, Breathe in and we're going to raise the hips up off the floor. So breath in, exhale, take the hips up high. And continue to breathe here in your bridge posture, creating a nice deep back bend. Maybe even interlace your fingers and place them underneath your lower back so you can open up through the chest a little bit more. But see if you can push your hands closer towards your heels. So you're creating a deep opening through the chest as the hips reach up towards the ceiling. One more breath. Inhale. And exhale. Wonderful. Slowly release the hips back down to the floor. And I want you now to slowly roll over onto your stomach, facing the front of the room. So gently bring yourselves up to seated, roll over, head to the front, feet to the back. Laying on your belly. Forehead on the mat, please. Are we all still good? Yep. Yeah? Excellent. It's been a long time. I hope you all kept up your practice through the uh, lockdown. So arms down by your side, forehead is on the mat, palms facing down. We're pre preparing for Salabhasana, Lotus posture. So this is a deep back bend and we're using the muscles of our back. So take the depth that is suitable for you today. Don't overdo it because we all tend to have back issues. Please look after yourself. As we breathe in, let's keep the legs together, toes together and lift both legs in a straight line behind us. Don't bend at the knees. Knees are not bent. The knees are, the legs are straight. Straight. We're looking to strengthen the back muscles, so don't bend the knees. Even if it means you only come up one centimeter. Now take the arms up, the head up. Into full locust. They can be by your side, they can be by the um, front, whatever you choose. Continue to breathe as long as you can hold this posture for one more breath. Inhale. Exhale. Slowly release back to the floor, placing one cheek on the mat, look to the other side and just take a couple of breaths here before we prepare for Bhujangasana Cobra posture. So still on our bellies, I want you to bring both legs together, nice and tight. Toes are pointing to the back of the room. I want you to have a tight one cobra tail. Both hands just underneath your shoulders, bending at the elbows, fingers facing towards me. Tucking your elbows close to your side. On an inhale, I want you to bring the upper body up looking towards me or up to the ceiling, whatever is best for your neck. So that's a breath in, coming up. And breathe in and out through the nose. Don't hold the breath. It's very common in this posture. People in this sta sta stage of the posture will hold the breath. Continue to breathe in and out. Tuck the elbows in nice and close to the side body. One more inhale. As you push through the tops of the feet into the back of the mat, can you find a little bit more extension through your spine? Exhale, release to the floor. Wonderful. 
Well done. So that's it, all the old postures are finished. We're going to prepare for Shavasana. So rolling over onto your backs now, please. Head to the back of the mat, feet to the front. Taking your time nice and slowly. Yeah. If you have some socks or cardigan or shawl or something, put it on, prepare yourself to just enter into Shavasana. So this is where we get the benefit of the exercises from yoga, the most important posture to rest. One thing that we all find very hard to do. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. We are human beings, not human doings. Um, so we don't want to keep doing, doing all the time. Rest is important. Close down your eyes. Let the feet relax, fall open like a book. Let the arms relax next to your body, palms are facing up to the ceiling. The breath returns to normal. No more deep breathing, just let the diaphragm do its thing. Belly rise, belly falls. Relax your feet. Relax the calves. Relax your thighs. Let the whole lower body relax. Get heavy. Relax the arms. Relax the shoulders. Relax your head. Make it heavy. Let go of any tension throughout your body. Let go of the tension in your jaw. Maybe even separate the upper and lower jaw just a little. Let the eyes feel heavy in the sockets. And just breathe. Taking the focus internal. Follow that breath. Imagine that it's growing from your base chakra all the way up to your crown chakra. slowly bringing awareness back into your body. Maybe wrinkle, wriggle your fingers, wriggle your toes. And slowly rolling over to one side, bring yourself back into a seated position facing the front of the room. Sitting comfortably, eyes are closed. Just take a breath here. Well done everyone this morning. It's lovely to see you all, and it's been my honor to guide you through your practice. And I'll now hand you over to Kushal, who's going to do the deep breathing pranayam exercises. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you for the wonderful session, Vandaji. I hope everyone enjoyed it. But I can share the good news with you that uh, all the hard bits are over now. So everything from now on is down there. So as you know, Maharshi Patanjali, who is the founder or main proponent of yoga, yoga is consisting of eight limbs, right? The eight limbs are yamas, niyamas, pranayams, asanas, pratyahara, dharana, dhyana, and samadhi. So what we did now was the asanas. What we're moving into is pranayamas, or the breathing techniques. And after this, we'll be transitioning into a meditation session or a dhyana. So the word pranayama itself is made of two different words, prana and ayama. Prana means the life force energy or the chi as we know it. 
and ayama is modulation or direction of that energy. So in the pranayamas, what we do, we direct that energy in different frequencies and different rhythms to different parts of our body. And that produces a factor of consciousness. So in today's session, we'll be doing two pranayamas. First of them is called Brahmari Pranayama or Bees Humming. So as the name suggests, what we do, we produce a sound like humming of a bee. And how do we do it? We do it with a closed mouth. So we'll be making a sound like hmm, right? And we'll inhale and as long as our breath allows, we'll continue with the sound. The deeper the sound, better the effect. Okay, and while doing this, what we'll do with our ears, we'll use our index fingers and we'll put it on the cartilage between our cheeks and the ears, right? And we gently press the cartilage to close and open our ears. If you want, you can keep your ears closed all the time, or if you want, you can alternately open and close them while making the sound, right? So, I will demonstrate one once for everyone's reference. I'm sure you all know it very well. That we'll do in here. Mm. So next round we will continue for four rounds now, okay? So everyone get your index fingers to your ears and breathe in from Hamari. So whenever you get into turmoil of your mind, you want to calm it down, you can just do a few humming breaths with this and you will see that all your inner conflicts fall away. Okay, moving on to the next pranayama, it is called alternate nostril breathing or Nadi Shodhan Pranayama. So after this actually we will be transitioning into the meditation. So I'll request you to keep your eyes closed as we finish this session and we'll be led into meditation by Prashanti. So as we talk about meditation actually, a lot of people have this concept that meditation is actually concentration or putting some effort into it. But meditation is nothing but being into our natural state of being. Wherever we are in that stage, we are already meditating. We don't have to put any extra effort or not visualize anything or concentrate or focus on anything, right? So meditation, concentration is actually a uh, the result of meditation. If you meditate properly, you will notice that your concentration has improved. Okay? So now let's do alternate nostril breathing. And this is why in this breathing, apart from the breathing, we'll be using both our hands, right? And I can tell you that this is a very excellent form of pranayama or breathing technique. So what is the universal symbol of excellent? When we say something is really good, right? We make that symbol. So I will ask you to make that symbol with your left hand and put your left hand on your left knee, fingers pointing to the front, right? And with our right hand, take your index finger and your middle finger between your eyebrows and with your right thumb you will control your right nostril and with the rest of the two fingers you will control your left nostril. So as we know that this is called alternate nostril breathing, means we will be breathing from say the left first and breathing out from the right side and we'll breathe in from the right nostril, breathe out from the left. So with every inhalation, your nostril will soak over. So what I'll do, we'll do one practice round, right? 
and then I'll guide you for first two rounds, and then we can continue with one hour forward. So we'll get into the posture. We we'll place our hands in the right position, and take a normal breath in, and breathe out from both the nostrils. Now cover your right nostril with your thumb and breathe in from the left. Take a nice long breath in. Then close your left nostril and breathe out from the right. Now breathe in from your right. Then close your right nostril and breathe out from the left. Breathe in from the left. Close your left nostril, breathe out from right. <coughs> breathe out from right. Breathe in from right. And breathe out from left. Breathe in from left. And continue keeping your eyes closed. As you inhale from the left nostril, you may gently relax eyes. Relax the body. Once again, take another deep breath in and exhale. Allow your body to settle. Incoming breath. Energizes the body. Outgoing breath relaxes the body. Every outgoing breath relaxes the body more and more. Around you. 
Listen carefully all the noises around you. Far away people talking. Music coming and going. Accept all the noises around you. Just like a witness, observe your thoughts. Ek sakshi rup banke vicharo ko sirf dekhte rahe. your feelings apni bhavna ke prati sachak ho jaye
and thoughts. Deep breath in. And exhale. I said the Become aware of your breath. Become aware of your body. Fingers, toes. Take a deep breath in with a smile. Exhale with a bigger smile. Muskurate hue keri sanaski chen. मुस्कुराते हुए उसे छोड़े बिकम अवेयर ऑफ योर सराउंडिंग आस पास के वातावरण के प्रति सजग होते हुए धीरे से अपनी आंखें खोल सकते हो इवन स्लोली ओपन योर आईज Are you guys feeling relaxed, relaxed. calm? Good. I would like to call Vinaji, our Vice President, Kiso, to give a vote of thanks to our volunteers and everyone. Good morning everyone. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the custodians of this land where we live today, the Wajib people of Lunga Nation. I'd like to pay my respect to the elders past, present and emerging. I deem it as a great honor to propose the word of thanks on behalf of ISPA on this wonderful occasion of International Yoga Day. First and foremost, I'd like to express my deep sense of gratitude to Constitution of India, Madam Tantu Chandravasaji. Thank you again, Madam, for your presence, for taking your time out of this precious time and on this Saturday morning. Knowledge will be a great source of inspiration to all of us and I really appreciate your presence again today. Thank you. I'd like to express my huge thanks to the President of Islam, Mr. Supriyaji Goa, for his uh, effort and commitment, also his wonderful leadership in making this, this event possible and also successful. Thank you, Supriyaji, for wonderful leadership. Really appreciate it. 
outside that to express all the dignitaries, guests, what is budget on this occasion and uh, accepting our invitation being part of this wonderful occasion and your presence will inspire all of us to follow the path of yoga and uh, live healthy life. And also I express my huge thanks to Mr. Deepak Jigupta, he is an event coordinator of this event and as you all know that he worked incredibly hard to make this event possible. He is also a qualified yoga teacher and uh, he is very approachable, very dedicated, knowledgeable and today to his uh, inspiring learning experience and we, we encourage all of us to follow the path of yoga. Thank you Deepakji for your huge effort and ladies and gentlemen, we have a huge round of applause. And for the last 3-4 years, every Saturday, every Saturday is volunteering, every Saturday is volunteering and organizing the yoga event and I really appreciate his incredible effort. And also I'd like to express my huge thanks to all the yoga instructors, Ji, Todd, Deepakji and uh, Paramji and also the meditation, uh, Brinda meditation teacher Kushalendriji and uh, uh, thank you sir and uh, also Prashanji and also our uh, Pranam teacher for our huge effort. As you know that uh, the experience, the energy, the vision, the effort they brought into this collective effort made this have an incredible experience and uh, and I will thank everyone. And uh, today, you've given us uh, the powerful tool, the yoga, where we can understand our body better and live a healthy life. And uh, thank for inspiring to follow the path of yoga. We really appreciate all your efforts. Thank you. <laughs> also, I express my huge thanks to ISWAG Element Committee members and also their sponsors here today and for their incredible effort and uh, amazing work they are doing behind the scene to make this event possible. I really appreciate your huge effort. Thank you all the members and uh, their sponsors. And uh, I'd like to thank uh, the media, you know, head of the media, Mr. Sukhataji, Sushmitaji, Sayantanji, and the entire team for covering this event and uh, reaching out to all the people and uh, the people can follow this event and uh, inspire and uh, follow the path of yoga. I really appreciate the media team for a wonderful effort. And uh, also I thank uh, JG for the photography for uh, his volunteering today for uh, this event. I really appreciate your huge effort, Jay. Thank you. Carlton, Carlton, Carlton. I'd like to express the Carlton Ji, the one, the man who is uh, uh, set up all the sound system and his uh, amazing and professional service made this uh, event sound beautifully. Thank you, Carlton Ji, for your wonderful effort. And I also thank each and every one of you today. And your presence not only really inspired and encouraged all these wonderful uh, yoga instructors to demo amazingly, but also given much needed strength, support, and confidence to SWA to organize the event like this one and serve this wonderful community and promote this uh, health and happiness to everyone. And uh, thank you everyone for your, uh, taking your time out and being part of this wonderful occasion. I appreciate it. Thank you.